is Vice President Kamala Harris black? I can't believe this is even a thing. Short answer is yes, Indian and black. I had to say that because apparently some people don't understand the concept of being multiracial. So this talk about Kamala Harris's blackness began in earnest as soon as she was announced as the presumptive nominee for president of the United States on the Democratic ticket. So let's get to the what and then we're going to get into the why. The what is a lot of black people online saying Kamala Harris is not black. They say that she exclusively claimed Indian heritage until recently, until she needed the black vote and then she started acting black or cosplaying as a black person. So let's get to the facts. Her mom is Indian. Her dad was born in Jamaica. Donald Harris, this is a black man. In her 2019 autobiography, Kamala states, my mother understood very well that she was raising two black daughters. She knew that her adopted homeland would see Maya, her sister, and me as black girls. And she was determined to make sure we would grow into confident, proud black women. A May 25th, 2016 profile of Harris in the New York Times Magazine states, Harris's mother brought up her daughters in the late 60s and early 70s in a black neighborhood in Berkeley, sharing a house with a friend who ran a small preschool. She had two black babies and she raised them to be two black women, Harris says of her mother's choice of community. In her autobiography, Harris recounted as a child regularly attending a pioneering black cultural center that held performances by some of the most prominent black thinkers and leaders of the day. Some of her greatest heroes were African-American lawyers, Thurgood Marshall, Charles Hamilton Houston, Constance Baker Motley, giants of the civil rights movement. Following the example of Thurgood Marshall, who went to law school at Howard University, Harris also decided to attend the historically black university in Washington, D.C. And while at Howard, she pledged AKA the oldest black sorority on the planet. Now, some people will say, but black sororities and fraternities admit white people all the time. Well, yes, some people that are not black are admitted into sororities and fraternities that are traditionally black. But I can tell you from my experience around AKAs, and I have had many, it's no way on God's green earth that the AKA sorority is going to let a cosplaying Indian person come into their ranks. In other words, an Indian woman pretending to be black and she fooled all of these other black girls into allowing her into a sorority did not happen. So the assertion that Kamala all of a sudden discovered her blackness only recently in order to gain votes to win the presidency is blatantly false. The record reflects as much. An alumni profile of Harris in Howard Magazine in the fall of 2016 noted that Harris was reared by her mother, a scientist and immigrant from India, and that Harris said that being on Howard's campus is during those formative years was central to her development as a black person. When she went to law school at UC Hastings, she was elected president of the Black Law Students Association. At the time, she says, black students were having a harder time finding employment than white students, and she wanted to change that. After being elected to the U.S. Senate, Kamala Harris became a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. Now, it is true when speaking in front of Indian audiences, Kamala leans into her Indian heritage, just like in this video with her and Mindy Kaling. We are both Indian, yes. but actually we're both South Indian. Yes, um, you look like the entire ha one half of my family. So Mindy Kaling is Indian, Kamala's Indian and Black. Why wouldn't she emphasize her Indian heritage while talking to another Indian. There's nothing wrong with embracing a family tree that you actually come from, as she did with her black side. When she attended Howard, pledged AKA, became president of the Black Law Students Association, and then a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. An AP story published in November 2016 stated, Harris will enter the chamber as the first Indian American senator and only the second black woman senator. Also, when Harris was elected San Francisco District Attorney in 2003, the Associated Press reported Harris, a former girlfriend of Mayor Willie Brown, will be the first female district attorney in the city's history and the first black to hold the office in California. Again, 2003, quote, Kamala Harris is San Francisco's first black district attorney. And Jet Magazine did a story about Kamala Harris in 2001. Some of you may not know about Jet Magazine, but it don't get much blacker than Jet. The only things blacker than Jet Magazine is do-rags and spades. So now the question is why? Why all of a sudden are we dissecting Kamala Harris's race? Well, 
because Republicans are desperately searching for a way to divide the black community against itself by calling into question Kamala Harris's authenticity as a black person, to get black people arguing and to shave some black people off to ensure that they won't vote for Kamala because apparently they believe she's cosplaying as black. And for the black people who keep saying that Kamala's not black, they are simply drinking the Kool-Aid of Colt 45. They would like to influence other black people not to vote for her by shaming her and saying she's not black enough, which in fact is a real goofy play because I have not spoken to one person who said they're voting for Kamala Harris because she's black. I mean, did white people vote for this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy because they were white? And you act like, we need some kind of special reason to vote against a guy found liable of sexual assault who bankrupted a casino of all things. You know what a casino is, right? You go in there and you drop your money off. We don't need a reason to vote against a man who set up a cancer charity for children and then stole the money. We don't need a reason to vote against a man who led an insurrection and tried to nullify 81 million votes. We don't need a reason to vote against a man who said all the cheating that took place in the 2020 election was where mostly black people live. Philly, Detroit, Atlanta, and Milwaukee. We don't need a reason to vote against a man who sent his goons to harass Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman, two poll workers in Georgia simply doing their jobs who got accused of fraud and had the entire MAGA universe turn on them in the form of threats, so much so they had to leave their home. So much so that they won a defamation lawsuit against Rudy Giuliani. We don't need a reason to vote against the man who told us to inject bleach. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning. We don't need a reason to vote against a guy who your 14 year old teenager is smarter than. We don't need a reason to vote against a man who was born with all the privilege in the world and whines and complains like a victim. We don't need a reason to vote against a guy who bungled a once in a hundred year pandemic when he said it was all going to go away by April. Did that happen? We don't need a reason to vote against the man whose entire political playbook is making up clever and not so clever nicknames for anybody that won't kiss his ass. We don't need a reason to vote against a man who don't understand how tariffs work. As I've said before, I would vote for a three legged dog before I vote for that guy. But let's talk about reasons to vote for somebody as opposed to voting against them. It comes down to belief, the belief in freedom for all people, the belief in women having autonomy over their own bodies, the belief that if a red state governor talks smack about you, you don't withhold emergency funding. One must understand that the character of an individual counts just as much if not more than their policy. And when it comes to moral character, Donald Trump is running a deficit. The only people talking about Kamala Harris's race are those who are against her becoming president. As Kamala Harris supporters usually only bring up her race in terms of the historic significance of the moment. So the games some people are playing, trying to convince other black people that Kamala Harris is not black is a futile attempt at shaving off these votes because her race is actually irrelevant. But since the question is, is Kamala Harris black? I offer this up as a small piece of evidence. And the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. Otherwise, I'm speaking. I know a black woman when I see one. And you know how I judge whether or not a person is black? This is my own little unscientific test. If this person was driving in the wrong neighborhood in a very expensive car, got pulled over by the police and got a little bit lippy, might they get beat or shot or murdered? The black. This man, her father, if he walked into a bar in the sticks of Mississippi in 1975, the only thing you would hear is this sound. That's a black man, not that it matters. And let's just get to this one last point so you can understand the game that they're trying to run on you. They first started out saying that she locked up a whole bunch of black men for simple marijuana possession, false. 1,500 or so might've been charged, only 45 did any jail time. And most of those people were put into a program that if they finished an educational requirement, their slates were wiped clean. Recidivism dropped 
by a bucket load. Go look it up. So the program that she implemented actually helped keep black men out of prison. But see, that's the game that they play because the same people who are feeding this tripe to black people about how many black men Kamala locked up are the same people that's gonna tell you that she's soft on crime, that she's gonna let criminals run in the streets and terrorize your neighborhoods. I don't think some of you know what a prosecutor does. And if somebody breaks into your house or puts a gun in your face and takes your car, I don't know what you wanna have happen to them. Don't tell me about how many people got locked up. Tell me what they got locked up for. So which is it? Is she soft on crime? or does she wanna lock everybody up? MAGA will never give you an answer for that because their only purpose is to distract you, to get this orange ass con artist back into the White House because he hates who they hate. Let's not forget how Donald Trump got his start in politics. He was the birther in chief. He was the most prominent purveyor of the lie that Barack Obama wasn't born in America, that he was born in Kenya. There is no way Donald Trump would have ascended to the White House without that lie. I'm saying it's a real possibility, much greater than I thought two or three weeks ago, then he has pulled one of the great cons in the history of politics and beyond politics. In those same three weeks, Trump's poll numbers have gone from this to this, nearly doubling in less than a month. Also increasing in his perpetual publicity grab, ratings for Celebrity Apprentice, up every week since he started the birther rant. Because as politics goes, a guy like Jeb Bush or even Marco Rubio might have won that Republican nomination based on name recognition alone. And a clown like the reality TV star would have never had a shot at the presidency had he not unlocked that hate. When people heard him say, this guy ain't one of us, he's not American, all the racists came out from under their rocks. And then they put a mask on it to say, well, he's plain spoken, that's why we like him. He's an outsider, he's not a regular politician. When most of them know full well that they like this guy because it was willing to stick it to the first black president in US history and not about policy either. It was about his very identity as an American. The punishment America got for having a temerity to elect the first black president was to give us the worst, most unqualified, most fraudulent, most morally bankrupt and racist president that we have ever seen. And the irony is he may just lose again at the hands of a black woman whose identity, coincidentally, he's trying to question again. This election will not be about what color Kamala Harris is. This election will be about stopping fascism in its tracks and continuing the progress this country has made since the 1960s. They're gonna scream, they're gonna holler, they're gonna whine, they're gonna lie, they're gonna try to trick you. Vote for who you want to vote for. But on this day of our Lord, we're not gonna sit around and lie and say Kamala Harris all of a sudden turned black. Cause quite frankly, that's cap. To my over 40 white viewership, cap means it's a lie. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike Powell?